Special Education, Family Engagement, and Re-Entering School in Fall 2020, a guide for parents and caregivers adjusting to the changes that have happened as a result of COVID-19. In this video, parents, caregivers, and professionals will be providing tips for implementing these six following strategies in special education this fall. Positive Relationships A good working relationship focuses both families and schools on the needs of students. Family Empowerment Families are empowered to partner with schools and learn how to actively support their children's success at school. Leadership Strong schools unite families and school staff in shared leadership and decision-making. Data-based goals and outcomes Schools and families work together to set engagement goals that are based on school and student data, multi-tiered or multi-dimensional. Communication between schools and families takes many different forms. Strategies to engage families and students may look different across the tiers of supports. Collaborative problem solving. Families are partners in effective problem solving to meet the needs of students who require more supports, particularly those receiving services at tiers two and three. How can schools and other organizations continue to maintain positive relationships with families as we are transitioning back into school this fall? What can families do to maintain these positive relationships in the upcoming fall semester, given the social distancing guidelines that will be in place? Focus on what the issue actually is and its impact on the student. As parents and caregivers, sometimes we get up wrapped up in our own frustrations and that comes out in masks what the real issue is. So just trying to keep a clear mind and focus on what is the need of the student and how can that need be met. Follow it up with a thank you email or a note or even a phone call to let the school know that you really appreciated their effort. Sometimes that's overlooked and the staff is doing the best they can right now. And so to have them recognize that'll go a long way what can families do to feel more in control or more knowledgeable about approaching this upcoming semester? Are there any tools or resources that schools and organizations can provide families with in order to support family empowerment? What choices can families make in terms of their child's education? Arm yourself with as much information as you can um, so that you can make informed decisions. In my county, there's a Facebook page, and I've seen plenty of posts from parents asking for uh, advice for, for certain things. The group that I belong to is invaluable. I mean, there's some really experienced <laughs> parents on the group, and I mean, there are a number of them that consistently give very, very good advice. Research the options that are available review the return to school plans or frequently asked questions that are on the school's website. I know a lot of the school systems have those documents there as well. And the Virginia Department of Education has a return to school guide that's available to families to research and learn more about what the plans are on the state level. Our partner, uh, PC, the Parent Education Advocacy Training Center, they are offering webinars as well as resources on their website to help guide families through this decision-making process, as well as tools on how to prepare in working through the curriculum during the school year reach out to the school administrators and the counselors. It doesn't hurt to make that phone call or send an email to those individuals and ask, what is it going to look like? How can I help my student feel comfortable walking into the building if they're going back in person or how to prepare to do the 100% distance learning model? Just depending on the um, needs of the kid, a lot of it is safety. Like if you have kids who elope, and they have to be six feet away and they're down on the other side of the line, like how is that going to work? And how is it going to work if they have an instructional aid, if they go into gen ed and they have an aid that needs to kind of prompt them and be there with them to help them access that curriculum, how is that going to work? Asking all those questions. And I've also had a lot of parents who are talking to their pediatricians, which I think is a really good idea just in terms of getting ideas 
on facilitation and what is going to be important to that child and the safety of that child and the health of that child. It's important to include the student in this process. Ask them how they feel about the options that are available and what do they think can be provided to help them feel comfortable in learning through one of those options. Having the student participate is very important, I think, in this situation because it directly affects them on a daily basis. It's a parent's right to call an IEP meeting anytime. It's also your right to record those meetings. If you're nervous or you're not comfortable with what they're going to be doing with your child, then it might not be a bad idea to record. What advice do you have for families who want to take an active role in being a leader within their child's education? How can parents advocate for their children during this time? When they're learning, pay attention to where their struggles are and where the difficulties are in comprehending what's being taught or in using the technology. And just relay that information to the school. You attend whatever board meetings you can, uh, school board meetings you can, reach out to your child's IEP team or whatever team they have at the school. You can always write a letter or email your school board members um, just to let them know your thoughts. I think what's really important for parents to know is that they do have rights under IDEA for the school system to provide some sort of supplemental um, educational services and that can be through private organizations and private therapies. So I would encourage them to either seek out, you know, guidance from their private therapists on ways that they can get additional services from the school system or also seek an educational um, advocate who can help them ensure that their child is getting the extra services that they need, either provided by the schools or provided by a private therapist that the school system would have to help, you know, coordinate. Right now he has two 30 minute Zoom sessions a day uh, and somebody's got to sit with him. I don't want to be sitting on, on Zoom sessions, you know, forever, but getting a little insight into into how those, those learning sessions work for him ha has been really interesting uh, and helpful for us too. I see more opportunities to reinforce some of the things that he's learned, you know, two hours ago. So, I mean, you're always trying to do that, <laughs> but it's just a different experience now. What is the benefit of using data-based goals and outcomes for students in special education? How can schools and organizations use data to help families with this transition in the fall? And what are ways in which families can choose to be engaged in data collection? The one time that we definitely ask our parents to participate is when problem behavior is occurring in the home so that we can create an effective behavior plan for the home environment. So that might be aggression such as hitting or kicking, or the child is harming themselves. It could be eloping, you know, they may be eloping from their parents in a parking lot or out of the home providing information. What have they been working on? What are some um, skills that they've seen their child continuing to do over time? What are some new concerns that maybe have arisen? You know, maybe their child is struggling wearing the face mask, or maybe their child is obsessing and wearing the face mask all of the time and not willing to take it off. Maybe we've realized that our hand washing skills could improve a little, right? The weekly meetings we have are our are, are opportunity to let them know, you know, look, he's doing really well in this regard, or he seems to be struggling a bit more with, with this. For families and students who are not as tech savvy, what can schools and organizations do to support them when it comes to having virtual meetings? What can families and students do to improve their own skills? How can families and schools or organizations ensure that their virtual messages are being understood clearly, as important aspects of communication, such as body language, are not currently part of the picture? You always know that you can email, <laughs> you know, team members and pose your questions. Having that the visual, you know, just being able to talk to them, uh, it's, I, I just think it makes a big difference. It's just, 
it's just so different from, you know, even talking on the phone. I have found relying on my kids um, helps a lot because they're familiar with the virtual platforms that the schools are using for the meetings. I would just say you check the school website and see what technical resources they have listed. They should have a mention of it in their frequently asked questions under their COVID-19 tab or link. Uh, call the school or email an administrator and explain that they don't feel comfortable using a virtual channel to have the meeting and what options are available to make them feel comfortable. And ask if they could have a support person sit in on the meeting with them to provide that technical assistance. The other piece of advice that I always tell parents is never sign anything on that day. Always take the document and read it. Go through the final document, make sure everything is correct before you sign it. Never sign that day. You're reading it and you think about something that you want them to add that you hadn't thought about. If you have, you know, whether it be an in-person meeting or a virtual meeting, follow it up in writing with either an email or an actual physical letter, clearly stating what your concern is and what you think based on your knowledge of your child's challenges, what could possibly be a solution and ask the school staff to help you reach or obtain that solution. What can parents do at home if their child is struggling with the changes that have happened as a result of COVID? How can schools or organizations work with each family to ensure that students are succeeding during the re-entry process? I have friends that are teachers and I see what they're going through and the stress that they're experiencing and I feel awful for them. I don't know how they would be able to individually you know, attend to each child. I feel like there is going to be a certain group of kids that are going to need to probably talk to a counselor. It would, it's more than I as a BCBA can address um, and more than their parents can address. There's things parents can do at home too, like, you know, talking kids through things or desensitizing them. I mean, wearing a mask is a big thing with a lot of our kids and a lot of our, we've had a lot of our parents just start to work on that around the house. Okay, you have to wear it for 30 seconds. Okay, you have to wear it for a minute. Okay, now you have to wear it. And finally, they're like, okay, if you want to go to Target, you have to wear a mask. Check in not only with the student, but the teacher. Yes, the teachers are overwhelmed at this point, but it's been my experience so far with my own child reaching out to the teacher and letting them know that we're struggling in a certain area. They were more than willing to get back to us and say, let's talk about it. Let's have that virtual meeting and try to figure out together how can we make the, the student feel more comfortable. Every week we sit down for um, 45 minutes to an hour with, um, with his program coordinator and we talk about what's working, what's not working. We, we ask our questions. Um, we come up with solutions for maybe some behavioral or other problems that we've seen over the past week. And then every other week, we have a Zoom call with his entire team and talk about you know ways we can do things better. Again, what's working, what's not working. It makes all the difference.